Right and let's see if this is all working. Let's see if this is all working. He says. Sounds like it is. Hello, everyone. Oh, I've... Ah! Legacy of what I was dealing with earlier. Hello. I'll move that up there. So. Hope you're all well. Hope you're enjoying life. I decided to do Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts mainly because... I have spent, I, I know I did con uh, talk about on the YouTube live yesterday, um, doing, um, potentially something else. Potentially, you know. Doing. Um, doing ultimate, uh, doing Battlefleet Gothic, but. If I'm being honest, I've spent most of the day dealing with some of the joys of Battlefield Gothic and arguing with it to try and get decent pictures for the June video. And you're going to see a little example of that come out tomorrow morning. And um, I want to have, I want to deal with ships which can actually fire backwards, okay? I've spent the day dealing with ships which cannot fire backwards. There is now a new beta build on Steam. Hmm. Excellent. Well, this is... I think it's upgraded. It's 1.2.9. 1.2.9. I think this is as up-to-date as it can be. I, I, do, I do tell my Steam to keep it as up-to-date and update it without waiting for me. And... Um, yeah. So, first off, I thought I'd have a little bit of fun, because I spent a lot, part, a lot of this week, hello Dr. Phonius, dealing with this ship. Now this ship is my modernized and upgraded K3. The beta branch has a lot of new holes. I will have a look at that then when I can uh, after this uh, today's uh, one is over, or maybe during today's one after I've done this. But yeah, this is my version of a modernized K3. And I actually decided on a battleship hull rather than a battle cruiser hull because I've went on the N3 and this tends to put it in the battleship category rather than the battle uh, battle cruiser category. Um, it should be at a battlecruiser hull, but this is battleship version. And yes, she can do 30 knots. Yes, you are right in thinking that she is armed with either side five twin 4.7 inch guns. I did actually consider doing things like, um, Barbettes. Doing things like this and then getting rid of that. But as you can see, that made the ship overweight and didn't give me any advantage, a noticeable advantage. Whereas, just sticking in these here gives me the firepower I need, and also means I have four uh, I have four turrets facing aft, and four turrets able to fire forward with very quickly. These ones being able to gauge as well on the sides. It seemed like a good position to be in. You're on 1.3, Spike, uh, uh, Leslie, uh, Spike, Spike. Um, I don't know why mine hasn't updated, though. I will find out at some point. But no. 
So this was basically what I have built her to. And she'll be going up against our old friend, the basically uh, a slightly improved version of the Bismarck. And I say this a slightly improved uh, version of Bismarck because she has an entire 13 inch belt along the entire ship. She is five inches uh, across the whole de all the decks, uh, two and a half inch inner deck, four inch inner belt. I can actually upgrade that. I can make that a five inch inner belt. And a two and a half inch inner belt. That should make her very, very strong. And um, yeah. She's a bit much, she's even stronger than actually they were in real life. Whereas this vessel is, well, no, she should have semi-automatic because that's the system they're looking at. That's correct, that's correct. Um, 64,000 tons. If we look at the real G3 class, Battlecruiser design. For 16-inch guns, they were planning on having a 14-inch belt, between 10 and 14 inches. So, if you're thinking about this vessel with a K3 design, with uh, its sort of scenario, it drops two knots of speed, so it goes from 32 down to 30. And probably a 16 inch belt is fine. Just going to keep this going up until we've got to the right level. I want them to be balanced. thought I could get away with it I would make it 16 the entire way along but I think I might just about get to 11 inches ten point eight will do that will do nicely All right hello from my agents and hello everyone one point three is the beta branch ah are there transom sterms? We'll have a look at the Americans after we launch this. I do warn you that some of the scenarios, I do look at them and go, mm, that doesn't look as much like them as we'd like to be. But uh, let's launch and see. So this is a very ahistorical art in a scenario, because real, in reality, if the British were, invading, uh, were fighting Bismarck, it would always be two capital ships versus one. So, I should probably go back and put in a second one of these, but I'm trying to be f slightly moderately fair. Put them under AI control, and so I can be fair and say it's AI versus AI, so it's no balance of me. It's not me may uh, changing it. And this is Caesar. A fine name in Royal Navy terms. And Caesar is already firing. Now our uh, enemy battleship is firing. So they're not that far out of range, dis uh, range disparity. There's not that much range disparity going on.
But as you can see, they can't see each other. They are entirely firing their main weapons. And it's the 15-inch shells which are coming down. Uh, please remember, our Bismarck is a Super Bismarck. I have made it far tougher than the real thing was. Which is good for them. That's a lucky shot coming, definitely. Definition of a lucky shot. Right then. So, what was that that hit? It was four deck. It was hitting the turrets. The turrets. Oh yeah, the turrets I've boosted up as much as I can do. So they are pretty much as strong as they can be. Hmm. That was a hood reenactment, definitely. That was definitely a hood reacting. Semi auto, everything else is pretty much good in there. Let's launch it again and see what happens this time. This should not be nice for them. Should not be nice for the, our um, German counterpart. Oh, it's already been hit. That's not good. You see, if you manage to get a direct hit on the front, this ship I built in a lot more armor into, I will admit. More armor than even the Bismarck had, because in reality, in reality, no ship built at a time could withstand that turret going boom and still have a bow. But this one has survived. Because I made it that tough. I am a very good at doing this naval architecture thing on this game, aren't I? I don't think it has any superstructure anymore. Or at least if it did, I, I don't think it's around. But look at that. Seriously, the entire forward turret's gone. By the way, in for anyone asking and wondering, in this scenario, if a ship's trading like this, it ain't fighting. It can't hit anything with itself like this. Yeah, this Bismarck is slightly more... Uh, let's put it this way. This Bismarck is slightly better than the original Bismarck.
They're doing okay. Let's go see what happens. So this is what happens in a world with 2k freeze. Uh, Bismarck's displacement is 49,500 <coughs> tons. And I think the displacement of this ship is actually greater. This is uh, a much enhanced Bismarck over what they could actually build. I know, because I designed it to be so. This ship would have been ripping itself apart. Uh, uh, this ship would have ripped itself apart at this speed with this list, yes. It would, in nicest way, it would be having multiple flooding and all sorts of issues going on. Oh, and another, another one hit. In the nicest way, if fires keep going on down that end, that's just not good. And it can't fire back, so in real life, it would be trying to duck away as fast as it could. Also, if you're doing, you're, if you're down this much in the North Atlantic, it's called goodbye. You might want to get away with it in the Mediterranean. You won't get away with it in the Atlantic. Oh, that's just... Secondary guns destroyed. And, um, yeah. Oh, sheesh. Look, in the nicest way, if you've been hit by that many 18-inch shells, the fact that you're still afloat is testimony to the quality of armor I built you with. It's sinking. Now... Uh, if we go to design ship section, and I just show you what she was made of. Before someone starts going, well, you made her very well. She's 58,484 tons out of the maximum 74,000 tons. But the actual Bismarck itself was 50,300 tons fully loaded. So this thing weighs 8,000 more tons than Bismarck did. Um, she's got more subdivision than Bismarck did. She's able to do 14,173 kilometers um, at 30 knots, at sort of 30 knots, rather than the 10,000, 16,000 kilometers at 19 knots Bismarck can manage. She can do 30 knots, definitely. Um, I could make a, 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 a let's make a 30.1 to be completely historically accurate for top speed wise 30.1 knots uh, she is got geared turbines all the all the force boilers oil shaft everything she's got reinforced bulkheads anti-flood defense full barbettes as much as we can give her she's got enhanced reloading which, yes, it's not semi-auto, but the reason I put semi-auto in the 18-inch is because, realistically, there is no way you can have any form of manual labor going on when you're loading and reloading 18-inch guns. As the Japanese testified to with Yamato and the British testified to with Experience and Furious, you're developing, and once you're getting onto that level, and this, especially once you're into this period, you're going to be looking at semi-automatic auto loading. The game does tell you the cruising speed on the. Crane tells you the cruising speed on the right. Um. Not in this version. Oh, design speed. Uh, engine power. Turning rate. Cruising speed, 18.3 knots. Oh, we can uh, we could up her. We can up that, probably. I don't know if I just noticed that one.
So her cruising speed was 19 knots. Let's make sure the, the cruising speed is 19 knots. I've given a top speed of 31.8 knots. And now she has a cruising, a cruising range of 18,743 kilometers. But now she does display 61,548 tons to the original Bismarck class, uh, Bismarck herself, of 50,300 tons. So let's be honest, this thing is 10,000 tons heavier than she is, and is actually probably bigger and um, <clears throat> slightly heavier than the Germans could actually man manage. She is also armed with the great multiple 5.9 inch gun because I'm sorry, I believe in dual purpose weaponry. So yes, I fixed that. I gave her dual purpose weaponry. I do admit this all, but you know, that's me. And she's got a lot of two inch guns. Because again, dual purpose weaponry. In the engine section. Yeah, oh, yeah. Cruising speed. In fact, we will go back to... Um, see exactly what the cruising speed... Now I know that the section exists. I've missed that before. This one has a cruising speed of 20 knots. <laughs> and a range of 30,000 kilometers. Uh, uh, if at that speed. Top speed, 30 knots. So this has a lower top speed, but a higher cruising speed. Happy Liberation Day, Jonathan Moon, to the Netherlands. 18-inch guns are much bigger than just, oh, we're just adding on a couple of inches and making the guns bigger. It's when you realise how much longer an 18-inch turret is, even in... Let's, uh, ooh, secondary tower, uh, main guns. So. I'm going to do something for you all, but, you know, just watch this. So, I'm going to put an 18 treble on the side here. I'm going to get rid of those. And then I'm going to stick a 15 inch I want to stick a 15 inch let's get anything around to the second. Let's go to an 18 inch singular. Because that will allow me to demonstrate it definitely. Next to a 15 inch singular. Mm, center line. Let's try the center line route. So, these are eighteen inch fifty guns. This is, if I go down to it. And boost it up appropriately. A 15 inch 50 gun. There is a difference in length going on there. Even on the screen, there should it should be visible. There is a difference in length. So, because that is, of course, that gun is 50 times 18 inches long. And that is 50 times 15 inches going on. For those who aren't sure what the difference in that scenario is, that's 150 inches. Or 12 feet length of the individual barrel. Then you've got the size of the chambers and all the mechanisms inside them to maneuver them. Which is why you end up with the turrets looking like this. A treble turret 
you see the distance across between the guns is almost as wide as the 15 inch turret is itself and the guns can slot in between them almost. Now, this is the point. These guns, everything about them is much bigger. And that's, this ship is a lot of firepower. Two of these ships would take pretty much anything. No, we've got two of these. Their range is uh, 36.1 kilometers high explosive, 37.9 kilometers armor piercing. Their Japanese counterparts, the Yamato, as that's built like it's supposed to be, isn't it? Uh, they were about that. Oh, probably about that level. They are about that level, because they don't get to the later enhanced. They are also about that level. So yeah. About right for Yamato. And... We'll launch and engage and see what happens. Is there a rule of thumb between shell mass and powder mass? Not really, because... Okay. Different powder and different powder mixtures. Because remember, most explosive is not... It's most of the powder used, most of the sort of the charges used, are not pure. They are mixtures. Because that is how you maintain control in it. So... Pretty much the limitations you have... Uh, the, the, the you don't really sort of have a rule of thumb, but you have a, a a case of right then this powder will require this many charges of this type of powder for this distance uh, for this shell or the way the shell to go this distance in this gun, and it's not so much a rule of thumb; it's an individual scenario. But you for each one will have their own sort of rule of thumb, I suppose. Archimedes, look a lot. Have you done a video dedicated on how navies improve the technology behind cruising speed range? Not yet. Mainly because there, I'm still working through the engine technology videos. Okay, I have to say, after spending a week testing out the K freeze quite extensively, I have come to the firm belief that the K freeze would have scared the bejesus out of the world. Firing too high, you need spotter aircraft up. You're firing too far.
You see, I don't think necessarily the K-free would have triggered treaties, but I think if you have the K-3s in the service, they are definitely going to change the treaties. Because you have enough of an impact from HUD. If you have HUD and two K-3s in existence, then the Royal Navy has arguably the three most powerful warships available of any nation at the time. I have no idea why my battleships have now decided to divide power of firepower. I, you know, I, I did, I, I've read some very interesting comments on the K3 video, on the sort of the K3 video where I talked about them, the G3 and N3 video where I talked about the K3. And one of the comments was someone was going, well, the British will be forced to give them up. And I went, well, the British weren't forced to give up Hood. And that was the scariest thing in the world at the time. But the thing was, the, the, the world, it was very simply explained, Britain would walk away from the treaties if they didn't get, if they didn't, you know, if they tried to get rid of Hood, force Britain to get rid of Hood. And as powerful a position as the Americans were in at the end of World War I, they weren't at that level that they could force that. Mm-hmm. Hannibal, what's going on? Has Hannibal had rudder damage? She seems to be flooding. She's got a lot of water coming in. Oh, good God, she's in 4.7 inch. Why have you guys got within 4.7 inch range? Oh, why is this bug shown up again? Why would you guys be getting into this? Your advantage is your 18 inch guns are longer range than theirs. Why are you getting into close quarter range fire uh, firing? They're both in the 4.7 inch gun range. See, this you don't get into the close range of 18 inch guns. These have 6 inch secondaries. This is not a good scenario. Why would you do that? Oh, I thought the I thought this computer had got over this particular issue. They managed to get over it with the Americans, with I mean with the fighting the Germans earlier. Why are we now in a scenario? Oh, I suppose they did get into fifteen-inch gun range in the first one. But why are you charging in? Yes, no wonder. So. Design ship again. So we have 18 inch guns which have a maximum range of roughly 36, 37 kilometers, right? You can see that on this design. You go to this other one. Their 18-inch guns have a range of 25 kilometers. Why in the name of all things holy would any commander... To use a phrase which I saw today, which someone used sometimes... Why would... My commander... Uh, the commander at this time, at this period, if they were sort of... They'd be captains. Why would... And it was actually a very good phrase. I'm, I'm tempted not to use it, but tempted to use it. Uh... Why would a fellow naval brother 
under, well, Poseidon. Why would a fellow naval brother under Poseidon? And I know the sort of the current uh, people keep sort of my, uh, my brother on the uh, brother or sister on the Christ, but I'm going to say as it's a naval history and naval thing, I'm going to go with Poseidon for this one as a bit of an inflection. I uh, just explain that before someone starts critiquing me and they should comment and uh, in the in the comments underneath and starts calling me a heretic. It's naval history. I'm doing that inflection. Uh, but why well, why would a fellow brother under Poseidon do that? Why? Why would you do that? Um, we're done. Let's launch again. And let's see if we can't make this more sensible. Now, ah, good. The range is coming. No. I'd like to adjust speed, please. I'd like to adjust the speed, please. I'm trying to click merrily on the speed to adjust, but you know. And I am manually controlling this to just keep the spe speed at, at the range at the maximum. And I'm having to do this by manual to keep them at the range that they should be. Yeah. 
Yep, uh, this is what you should be seeing a scene happen in the earlier battle. They should have kept them at range and just kept blasting away. Which is what battleships do! Oh, good. Dr. Ferenius, by the way, the hulls and the new beta so far have been focused on the of the air American battleships and late game destroyers and cruisers. The DD weight limit has been raised further. Also, some nations who previously lacked sub 40k battleship options to let a late game receive new battleship hulls. By 1940 beta, you can now make 6,000 ton destroyers. Fun times. Ooh! That's cool. A 6,000 ton destroyer. Uh -huh. In 1940. Oh, if you could make a 6,000 ton destroyer. Basically, yeah, at that point you are making you are making a lot of fun. That's a torpedo factory, a six thousand ton destroyer. The limit on the Royal Navy battleship is annoying if you want an 18-inch battleship. There are lots of limits which are annoying in, that, in some sorts of games. Don't think the UK received new cavalry ship hulls. <sighs> Probably not, because some of our battleship designs in that period get a bit weird. I do still think that if these things had been built, if there had been K3s in service in sort of 1920 or uh, finished in 1920 and the Royal Navy had gone, yeah, we got two K3s and two and, and a hood, uh, it would have been a very interesting scenario for the, um, uh, the, the world of the treaties. It would basically have been a case of yeah, these are basically triple 18-inch gun renowns, because look. This is why I went with the 4.7-inch double rather than anything else. It's because they are pretty much renowns for triple, inch gu uh, triple guns. And that's why I modernized them like they were renowns. Because that is what the K3 design was. Like, uh, you know, if you look at the K3 design, you're basically looking at a renown which has been scaled up to have triple 18-inch guns. And if you're going, Alex, you're now you're now turning towards them. I'm not, because basically they are turning sort of away and turning around, and I'm basically going around them. And at this point, they have all been seriously damaged. It would have been interesting, so, uh, interesting world for the short-sighted in New York Senate committees. It would have been interesting for them. T uh, Tillman gets a lot of flack, quite rightly, but he also he is misunderstood to some extent. And 
what would be really interesting about it, and really, really interesting about it, would have been the, cap uh, the capabilities that came out from it, because you would have had to adjust quite a lot of the treaty limitations. That one's not going to fire back at anyone, is it, anytime soon? And, um, well, you're about afloat, but that's just not good. <laughs> How is today afloat? Look, they've had a turret go up. They are out of ammunition. At this point, yeah, I can turn you over to the auto. Uh, one of you has sunk, and you have got no 18-inch ammunition left. If all your 18-inch ammunition has blown up, you as a ship would have destroyed. There is not a chance this ship would still be around if all its 18-inch ammunition had gone up in smoke. Jonathan Moon, not based from Wargamer, my Wargamer land. I'm currently designing a super heavy tra a heavy transport capable of not just lifting, but also airdropping six 30-ton sea containers for absolutely no reason whatsoever. I presume for fun. There is no way this vessel has a spectacular explosion. Oh, we're now in six... Oh, we've got into six-inch gun range. Why would we get into six-inch gun range? I suppose once you're in six-inch gun range, you're in guaranteed 18-inch kill range. That's gone. There you go. Right then. So, yep. Yeah. Yep. Sagi, Kaga, Caesar got hit at some point. She was on fire at the end. They are chonky. They are kind of corgis of K3 ships, but I do admit that they are kind of deep. They got late gain of advanced escort cruiser. I will be in the nicest way. My problem, as we've been over before, with the uh, UK vessels in this game, has nothing to do with their battleship hulls. It really doesn't. It has everything to do with this. This destroyer does not fit the Royal Navy. That is not a Royal Navy destroyer shape. Okay? That's not what Royal Navy... That, not in World War II. Not even the VWs look like that. And then if we change from here and we go to... I think it was... Was it America? Just in case I accidentally press current, design ship. And I go enemy. And I go look at their destroyer. Yes! That isn't an American shape. That's a British shape. No. No, I, I'm, no, I'm not doing the fat goring ship. That just would insult my design new dd hulls and new towers i hope so because in nicest way that is a british shaped structure not an american superstructure <clears throat> mm. 
for example, um, in fact, Let's see, da -da 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 -da. Fletcher's underway, 1940s, I want to see them. And da -da 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 -da. I want to have a picture of it in 1944, roughly, yet I'll do. So, I'm going to put some pictures up, and you're going to tell me which it looks most like, because... No, not that one. Image. Desktop, 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 because I stored it on the desktop. Okay. This is a Sullivan's. Now, can add another image. This is HMS Nubian. Okay? So, there you go. Now, American Fletcher class, British Tribal class destroyer. Tell me, which does that one look like? I'm not sure who's mucked up the British and the American destroyer files, but someone has. Because that is a British destroyer structure. And if we go back, I would say that is closer to the American structure. I wouldn't say it's a good fit for the American structure, but it's closer to the American structure than the British structure. Your Twitch is crashing. I'm sorry. Okay, so this is my point. This is the set that is supposed to be the British destroyer, and it looks closer to the American one, but not a good fit for the American one. And this is supposed to be the American one. And it looks closer to... It looks... Uh, it, it's, it's the British one, let's be honest. It is the British. So, yeah... Small problem. Small issue. In fact, yeah, it's got this is this tower is straight out of the Royal Navy's design. You can even see the bit which goes over the gun. I will update to the beta. I, I'm not sure why it hasn't updated. It's supposed to auto update everything any, anyway. Perhaps because they've listed as a beta and I tend to use a um, 
a working version. But it's it, it's it's. I don't know. I find it all these things fun. So, what was the other question I was set this week? I was asked this week was about. Um, oh yeah, it was about the Italians. Versus the French. So, yes, we will take that. Oh. We will add some destroyers in there as well. And I will build them. So. And bye-bye. And bye-bye. Now. Let's go modernize Dreadnought. I have, of course, the Dado. Intimately wipes your save so that's annoying. Uh, this is going to be my Francisco Caracola class, so... I'm going to open that up, and I'm going to imagine how it would have been upgraded. And those who don't realise, today uh, on YouTube you will find coming out a video... Oh, what's it today? It's not the Tillmans today. Could be the Francisco Caracola class? I'm not sure. Which is it? Today, going live. Literally just have gone live. Uh, is it the Lexington class battle cruisers? It's the Lexington class battle cruisers. Francisco Caracola class come out on the 19th of May. So they come out in two weeks' time. We've got the Amagi class before then. On the 12th. So, Francisco Caracolos are to come. But, I think they'd have been very cool. And so, I'm setting that speed for 28 knots. And I'm going to name this ship... Uh, the Marcantino Colonia. So, now it's going to be that, and it's going to have a top speed of 28.2 knots, because I'm going to make it really fast. Uh, we are going to have geared turbines, because that is what they were going for. Oh, yeah. Um, they're few, they were going to be, let's see, did this show? Oil fired, all oil. They were going to have a range of 15,000 kilometers at 10 knots. So these ones have a cruising speed of 17 knots for 11,000 kilometers. Um, I think we're going to do that. They are Italian, so let's give them veterans, because they are pretty much veteran. And they're going to have standard quarters. They had pretty good that one, and that. Right, let's see what... This is going to look like... ah, That's a riff off the British. Ah, The Italians designed sexy looking ships. This is not... The, 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 the Italians were not rips off of the British. Um, that's about the best I can stick in there, but it's, it is a rip off of the British. It is a, a massive rip off of the British. Don't like that. Okay. That's closer to the Francisco Caracola. Um, they're supposed to be thirty four thousand tons displacement. But modernized Dreadnought, for some reason here, is about 
64,000 tons. Is it, uh, Spike, uh, Spike, is this in part based on the John Jordan book trips after Washington? Yes, to an extent. Um, it's actually, this is actually supposed to come after the mask, not before the mask, but it's going to have to. Okay, I'm going to do something naughty. I'm going to start modifying the engines a bit. All to try and get it all to sort of start fitting, presumably somewhat... So, again, it's... This is going to be a Francisco Caracola class in name only, because basically I uh, it's not going to look like them at all. It's going to be as close as I can get them with what they're allowing me to do. Oh, this is just a travesty. They were not fat ships. They were thin ships. Although, they are not the deepest raft ships in the world. But that will do. And... Let's go for... Do -do 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 -do. That... Not far enough, I bet. Okay. Why are you not able to fire over anything? Hey, this is this is proving disturbingly difficult to put together. That's getting closer to the shape, but still not it's not the right shape. It's not the right shape. Turrets look okay, they look sort of right. Yes, they do look sort of right. I will I will, I will concede they look sort of right.
Alright then. We'll put that in. See if we can get a 15 inch gun up there now. Okay, why are you claiming you can't fire? The front can fire, but the aft gun can't. No, I don't want that shape. That's terrible. That really does not... Oh, that's not even any better. Um, that's possibly worse. How are we going to fix this? Extra tall. How is that getting... How is that... So, it's the secondary tower which I have to watch. Alright, we're going to have to call that as Francisco Caracola class as we can get, but that looks more like a British R class than it does a Francisco Caracola, let's be honest. Um, six inch guns, they had a lot of them. And a lot of four inch guns as well. So let's go with... Um, some twin six inch versions. Uh, that's not going to work. That's not going to work. That's not going to work. Okay, let's sort out the bit. Uh, let's fatten up the beam a bit.
not quite the same amount of six inch guns that she was originally on with, but enough to make her interesting. Uh, twin four inch guns. Well, she's got some, for, so it simulates what she had as an air defense system. And then she had a lot of 40mm. Well, let's go to our good old 2-inch guns and see what we can put up. Ooh. There you go. That's a lot of uh, for, uh, no, those. Um, our fourth site is still quite heavy. I don't get any more twin six inches on my RTR. Yeah. I can do. Well, that's pretty nice. Torpedo launchers. She was originally fitted with eight torpedo launchers. Um... I'm going to put them here. And Citadel, we're going to go with Advanced Armored Citadel. Turtleback, that's pretty much what she had. Half weight offset now, 7.5%. Let's start in with the range keeping. Um, Conic Acoustics, she would have had something. Ra radio finding, radar, the, the Italians did actually have Generation 1. Uh, enhanced, certainly. Uh, torpedo, they were 21 inch. Some parts are badly placed. Which parts are badly placed? I can't see anything that's badly placed. What's the part that's badly placed? Oh, you don't like the torpedoes being there. Not enough space for those, so you want trebles. Well, in that case, I'm going to make sure she has eight. By adding in those as well. So. Record amount of ads today. Um, I don't know why. It's supposed to be on the auto system. And it's I've set it to the minimum so that it gives me money for them. Uh, I am sorry if that's turned into a record amount of ads. It's not supposed to. It's supposed to be on the sort of the whole system set up. Half weight is very, very heavy, so let's go find out why. Half belt, 17 inch main belt. She'd have loved the 17 inch main belt, but the actual belt was supposed to be 12 inches. The deck was going to be a good old 2 inches. I'm going to increase that to 3 because it'd be more nice. Uh, conning tower was going to be 16 inches, yes. Superstructure, I think I will actually upgrade that a bit. Um, let's see. Uh, four deck, I'll make five. Main deck, I'll make five. <sighs> Hello, you. You complaining? You might have heard there were complaints coming. No, Britain wouldn't have... In the nicest way... I, I don't think there would have been the drive to make the 14-inch gun. The, the reason they went to the quad turret was the limitations of 35,000 tons. 
if you don't have that as your limitation, I don't think anyone's pushing for the 14 in the, the quad turret. I just don't think it's the case. Pitch, 27.2%. Why is the pitch so much? That's about the centre of the ship. What's causing the pitch? What's causing the pitch? I'm hoping I get to the um, number of followers soon that I can turn off ads for followers. I need to get to... I'm not sure how many it is. Push a turret forward a little bit to drop the pitch. That's increased the pitch. That hasn't dropped the pitch. Well, I suppose it has dropped it a bit. Not sure why they were hanging in midair there, but hey ho. Forward offset is now 5.2%. Uh, uh, okay. Hmm. Can I make this look like I'm modernized? Would have looked. We can get there, I think. We can get there, I think, if we can play around with it enough. Port side turret didn't move. It's moved now. Oh. That would be fun. The sheer amount of 40 millimeters on this ship. Sheer amount of 40 millimeters of fun. Okay, we will leave the destroyers as I have designed them because they are gorgeous, super Italian destroyers, the Italian tribals. Um, just looking beautiful. And let's go see what our French counterparts are going to be. Um, yes, I remember designing this and thinking, oh good lord, that looks more British than the British one that did. Okay, yep. Yeah. 
Oh, this is what I was playing around with the other day. Uh, no, that's not that's 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 not fair. That's that, that's not fair at all. Um, new design. Um, Monized Renault, and let's see what the auto design comes up with for me to fix. Oh, this this shit looks interesting. Fifteen point. Okay. Why? Oh, why would you do that? Think about this. In the name of all things holy. What is the reason to have a gun positioned there? In real life, why would you have a gun there? You wouldn't. Um, we're getting rid of you. You. We're getting... You, no, you, no, 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 what the frig are you? Um, that's just, no, 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 no! I'm just, I'm, 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 I'm clearing you, clear, clear, let's clear you all and let's start again. Okay, let's go look at the, uh... The Leon class. Okay, we're going to look at the Leon class. They were going to be armed with quadruple 13.4 inch guns. So, centerline guns, 13 inch, quadruples. Let's look at the Leons. Leons are what we're taking our Inspiration for for this French dreadnought. Main tower. None of this looks like the French Navy's actual designs. Again, that's British. And that is one of British, that's HMS Hood. I think that's a dreadnought. So, oh, come on. The French have better funnels than that. I know I've put them in on a ship. I know, because I built it like them. Uh, huge super imposed by that, definitely. So it's going to well, it's gotta be pretty big to have that up there. And it's going to have to be... Yeah, it, it, it can't be a small barbette, because in the nicest way, have you seen the size of gun going on it? Alright then. And about the same, veterans, but just... I will look into an American Dido after we sorted this one out. After I've built a decent Ameri uh, French battleship. Oh, for goodness sake. Does the game have oh, thank you. Thank you, Ily Loves History, for being subscribed for three months. Thank you. And, yeah, uh, the turrets would have 11 inches of armor on them, so, no, I'm going to give them 12 because I'm being generous, but no, and a barbette would have been about the same, 
So they think they were 13.4. And these are what? 55 guns. And... They were 45 guns. So I need to take them down. Yep. So, these are realistic French guns. Radar about the same. Radio the same. Slightly... Slightly better sonar. Uh, Semi-auto, because the, the French are obsessed with it. The other are hydro... Uh, we'll give them TNT free by this point. I would give them uh, that. And let's put it this way. Uh, d oh, good. I'm just reminded that these ships were going to be mixed steam in turbines and triple expansion steam engines. So, um, which should I go with? Should I go with basic turbines? It doesn't allow me to go for triple expansion steam engines at this point. So let's say these have had an upgrade. So let's say they've got geared turbines. Let's be nice. And they were designed with a top speed of 21 knots. I'm going to give them having had a boost to about 23 knots. I have a feeling I know what's going to happen in this fight. I, I, I'm not sure, but we can all try and guess. But I, I have a feeling. I have a feeling I know what's going to happen. Um... Ooh, that's starting to look a lot sexier, but we'll leave that to one side. Shaft there. It was all going to be oil-powered, but very basic. Um, electric batteries. Hello. Very good. Pro Again, this has had an upgrade. Um, French armors. Hello. 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 Uh, yes, you've come up. I don't, you do realise at this point the French are the people we're fighting, so you are. I'm set, trying to set them up as well as I can, to be fair, and you are currently preventing that fact. <sighs> Definitely preventing that fact. Oh. Six submerged torpedo tubes. Oi. Yes. There you go. Six torpedo tubes. All um, supposed to be... This was the French response to Queen Elizabeth class. Um, oh, 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 uh, hang on, hang on, hang on, they were going to have a main inch belt of 11 inches. 11.8 inches, so let's take it down to. You want to get up, dude? You want to get up? Okay, okay, alright. Up you go. Oh, there goes my head back a sec. Ah, oh, hello. Oh, good lord. Hello, you're up. You're up. To what do I owe this loving? To what do I owe? Someone send help. I'm being squashed by a poodle. <laughs> Help me! <laughs> oh, good lord. Oh. Oi, Karama. <laughs> oh. Hey. Thank you. Uh, uh, oh. Hello. Yes. Ah. Oh. Oh. Hello. <laughs> Please. 
fun ship shape so I can get away from up and my body can recover my internal organs from being squashed. <laughs> right then, uh, 24 5.5 inch guns. Hello. Um, secondary guns, 5.5 inch guns. Hello. Raleigh. Thank you. That should be enough firepower to do what I need to do on those fronts. And uh, six 4.7 inch guns for AA work. Okay. And we'll let you in there. And hello. Hello, yes. You're cute. You're gorgeous. Yes, you're very cute. Yes, I have the right amount of respect for you and love for you. And that. So, Conning Tower. Nowhere near that one. Nowhere near that one. Deck. Oh, deck was going to be roughly three inches. Three, three. I'm probably going to upgrade this in a second. I have no idea why that was going to be that, but you know. In a deck, three inches. Second in a deck, one and a half inches. I'm basically now just umping it up in a belt six. This ch just to try and give us a chance of surviving. A small chance of surviving. And I mean a small chance. 5.5 inch. And they were what going to be... And these will be 4.7 inch guns. Right. Torpedoes. I need to fit in the torpedoes, don't I? I thought I fitted the torpedoes. I have. Right then, so shall we see what this fight is going to be like? Don't think me calling 999 is going to help. Sadly, it wouldn't have been, but you know, I doubt they'd come out to protect me under those circumstances. But uh, yeah, I, I, I don't... I'm not sure, let's see, these got a range of 19.9 kilometers. Yeah, I think um, this doesn't isn't going to bode well. I don't think this is going to be good. This is a fair matchup. Oh. 
But we're going to see what happens. We are going to see what happens. I always love the way the one basically behind just keeps sort of going backwards and forwards. Longer range fire plan. Six destroyers on the screen. The destroyer screen seems to be just charging off. Uh, it's it's nice to know the destroyer screen is like that. From experience, the Italian destroyers are very, very good. Hello, Garius. French pre-dreadnought are sobbing. No, I have... I have faithfully tried to recreate what the Normandy class, as faithfully as I can, would have been like. Tried to. Admittedly, they have decided to give me a very British looking superstructure. But these are French looking guns. With all sorts of interesting things. Uh, to be honest, everything was British except the British. That is the thing I've noticed with this game sometimes. Who look American, yes. the Brit In terms of destroyers. Although, I would say the Italian destroyers... They look Italian. Or at least not British. Help! I'm getting squashed again. Oh, good God. Hello. Yes. Oh, hello. Uh, hello. Uh. Hello. Um, someone needs a lot of attention this evening, as you might have noticed. The destroyers are doing well. I'm not sure what my destroyers are getting fired at by. They're supposed to be screening the battleships. Are they getting taken out by the French destroyers? Because if they are, that's going to be mildly disappointing. I think they are. Is that... You cheeky... Not only does it look like a British ship, it's called Somali. HMS Somali was a Royal Navy tribal class destroyer, not a French ship. Malaga, we interrupted this round of this naval history for belly rubs. Yes. But that is not... That is... That is wrong. I'm very happy my French tribals are doing so well against their Italian counterparts, but... You know... We've lost two of our destroyers. The destroyers are getting wiped out. I think this battle might come down to destroyers. I think it might come down to destroyers. Yes. Well, you see, to be fair... Oh! 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 That was the lower intestines. They got squished. Oh, the lower intestines got squished. And you have you have no cares about it at all, do you? You squish your papa's lower intestines and you do not worry at all. <sighs> so the Italian battle of destroyers have been wiped out.
The French battleships, I know where they are. But there are now virtually unmolested French destroyers heading my way. In battleship fight, in battleship terms, this is not good for the French because their battleships are not up to really fighting the Italians. But if the destroyers, the Italian destroyers, which are pretty were pretty well designed ships, have been wiped out. They were only deployed as screening. Now, admittedly, they do have six-inch guns if they need to, to engage. And four-inch guns to engage. So... But torpedo damage is starting to mount up or something. I'm not sure. There's fire coming in. The French destroyers are good. They're, of course, being led by what is actually a British destroyer, the Somali. But they are doing well. But the trouble is they now engage in 6-inch and 6-inch gun range. And, yes, Somali sunk. You know, that's the point which people often forget. They ask me about, you know, they go, so why were navies not concerned with torpedoes prior to World War I? They were. They just decided that rapid firing guns to sink destroyers was the best way of dealing with torpedoes. Stop the torpedoes being launched, sink the destroyers first. And it worked. Which is why, again, you know, some nations then never uh, managed to get the submarine working. Or rather, what is basically a submersible destroyer or torpedo boat for a um, for most of the World War One period. Yeah, the six-inch guns should deal the destroyers. But I, I swear, the French... Their 5.5-inch guns are ripping away, firing away, and I think they actually outrange my 6-inch guns. And there are a lot of French destroyers left. But destroyers are glass cannons. There go some of their destroyers, thanks to the secondaries on the battleships. So basically, Italian destroyers got wiped out by French destroyers. French destroyers are getting wiped out by Italian battleships. If the Italian battleships then wipe out the French battleships... It's going to be a case of why did the Italians bother with the destroyers? Good boy. And, um, oh good lord, their battleships are in trouble. This is often also the other point forgotten. When you talk about battleships, people look at them and they just think about them engaging other battleships. But you have to remember, they were pound for pound in their time. The best ship-killing weapon you had out there. 
it wasn't just their main guns which could take out other battleships. It was all their weapon systems and being able to use them all that would allow them to engage in multiple targets. You know, if you've been able to give them a radar control system to control their guns and missiles like you have on Aegis, they would have even been able to blast away through aircraft. Yeah, th th there are various uh, various French destroyers are really worried about life because they they've been pummeling away at these battleships and they don't look like they've even noticed. Another destroyer's gone. This one's currently lacking an engine. The Oroflam. And the Bordes... ...is fighting as best as it can. Oh... That's just... That's just mean, okay? Uh, the Francisco Mussini is currently engaging two targets at a time. They are literally engaging primary weapons at the enemy battleships, and secondary weapons are currently targeting the Euroflame and going, I'm going to kill you. The question is, which do I kill first, enemy battleship or you? But I, I honestly don't think they're going to be losing any time soon. I think the French battleships are out for the count. They're honestly, that's just, that's just not doing well. That's, that's slightly embarrassing. The Italian destroyers are the sea of the subs now in game. I, I don't think there are any subs in this game. Um, I haven't seen them yet. If I, if there are, they do add subs. That'd be quite cool. I suppose that. Oh, I'll die in the missions. And another destroy. The Bordeus is gone. I think that means the last remaining destroyer is the. Or hang on, nope. The last remaining destroyer was the Bordeus. Before anyone asks what I'm doing, I'm currently cleaning my poodle's eyes because he, he he's he's wandered in here, and he's asked for attention and he's getting attention, but it's not the attention he wanted. Ah, he's the poodle is winning. The poodle is winning. I, uh, the, the, the poodle is winning. The Italians are winning and the poodle's winning. We can all be very worried why that the poodle is winning. Yeah. Oh. Oi. And now the... Oh, good lord. One of the French battleships is gone. The Flandre. The Flandre is gone. That's just... And the Requit. So... Our winners, the Italian battleships. Now, please note, this is why, and I will be making this point in a long form in a video about them, the Francisco Caracola, that their most impactful class, not finished, not finished because of the treaty system, is the Francisco Caracola class. Because if they'd been finished, the sheer amount of problems they would have set up, being able to do 28 knots, having eight 15-inch guns and being built as they were would have caused an absolute revolution to be needed. Because if you think about that, they'd have been powerful enough they could have challenged anything that existed in the world at the time, especially anything that could get into the Mediterranean. So the British, the French would have both wanted to build something. Right then, something, and who knows what that something would be.
Who knows what that something would be? It'd be an interesting thing to see what that something would be. Right, what we uh, there were suggestions for what they wanted uh, people to be, uh, me to build next and to look and test that next. Um, uh, hello, uh, let's, see, uh, let's see. Hello, Malaga. I think I forgot to say hello to you. Ah, AA light cruiser. Let's go build an American light cruiser and see what it's like. We'll put it up against the Japanese. I will go light cruiser, light cruiser, light cruiser versus some destroyers because that's a fair sort of fair fight. Let's put a uh, let's put a division on that and a couple light cruisers. And this is I've only got the modern light cruiser hull. I'm going nice and make it that that. Beam narrow. And if I remember correctly, we want. to have as many 5 inch as I can possibly fit on it. What are you doing? You being a naughty fluff. You don't know how to be a naughty fluff, do you? But you sometimes you are tempted. You don't know how, I'm sure, but you are tempted. So this thing is already starting to look pretty darn British, but we'll see what we can do. We want 5 inch 38s, don't we? Um, G threes probably get approved. The G threes had been improved. The G threes were already uh, were already starting construction. Uh, the admirals. The interesting thing is whether or not the admirals get approved for conversion into aircraft carriers because that's the thing. BT makes decision based on the fact there's no real threat. So let's go with the courageous class because it's going to take up the least tonnage. And his whole thinking is, if we use less tonnage, then we have more tonnage available for later construction under the treaty limits. And you can understand that to an extent, but you know, I have a feeling he might go. It, it might be different in the world where the Francisco Caracola class exists because you've got to suddenly make it viable for your slower line to catch them. And if you're not going to be able to convert your R class, etc. Uh, you know, get rid and change your R class, and you've got the Francisco Caracola in the world, you're going to want to have something faster to deal with them. And what else do we want? We want um, two inch, lots of them. Yeah, we do. Hello, you are you're go Ugh, you're gorgeous, but you're big and scary. You're scaring everyone. Haven't you noticed? Everyone's being very quiet on chat since you've started beating me up. Yeah, you're scaring them. That doesn't have any effect on a poodle, does it? You just go, yeah, of course I'm scaring them. I'm a poodle. People think poodles are soft dogs who just go, yeah, they, they like the world. They aren't. Why is it... Oh, good. Let's, let's maximize beam again. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Stream Vanguard. Thank you for following the channel. Let's see. What we were fitting. We were working out how to fit in a load of these.
Yeah. That should be pretty much enough to do what I need it to do. That's not... See, the thing is, the, 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 the efficiency person in me is just going, well, why don't I just have that? But if I have that, then I do have more to fire forward. Which is an advantage. Sort of. But what I can do... Do that. And do that. There you go. Evening history, Vanguard. And this is our American cruiser. Geared turbines. Definitely geared turbines. Uh, we want that. We want that. We want, oh, that. We want a double hull because I'm not the American Navy. I want my destroy uh, my cruisers to actually survive. I want reinforced bulkheads. I want as much ammunition as I can carry. Definitely maximize HE because this is that sort of scenario. Um, negative 5% to gun range, but massive amount of uh, gun accuracy. Plus 5% to gun base accuracy. Uh, da -da 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 Leave that or that one. Hang on now. And electro hydro. Semi-auto reloading 21-inch torpedoes because I just can. Most advanced long-range systems physically possible to fit. And because we are going to, I think we're doing Atlanta class as the basis of this. It's a Super Atlanta. With many, many 5 inch 38s. I. The armor. Oh, good lord, the armor is terrible in the Atlanta. Um, I'm going to upgrade it. I'm, I, I'm, I'm going to upgrade it. Because I can. They are 5 inch 38s, yep. Right. What is the part that's claiming is badly placed? And that's so badly placed I can't take it to see. That's fine. Okay, now I can take that to see apparently. What do you think of the common turn? Worse than the beam and a uh, burn and a grass zeppelin? Um, oh. It's heading there. It's making a good stab at being worse than them. Let's put it that way. Let's say it that way and sort of be nice. Aft weight offset 19%. How is the aft weight that heavy? What is happening down aft that is so heavy, considering I've got all this up the front? That's better. Half weight offset, now that. Um, da -da 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 -da. Do, 
good. Right then, and let's... What else can I add in? Let's add in a bit of a ram bow, shall we? That should do. Right then. Shall we go see what this uh, see go see what this does? Its cruising speed is twenty knots. The uh, the actual Atlanta class cruising speed was top speed thirty two and a half knots and cruising speed of. 15 knots, so... This one's cruising speed... This one's cruising speed now is 22.4 knots and top speed 33 knots. Range at well, 15,700 kilometers at 15 knots versus 22,000 kilometers at a cruising speed of 22.4 knots. So yeah, I think this should be okay. Let's go see what this does. Let's see what happens, shall we? Sorry. Not sure where that comes from. Presume you brought a flower in with you and that's come in my drink. Again, thank you. Apologies for that. Um, I've sunk a few ships. This is two light cruisers versus four destroyers. So, honestly, it's not really fair, but it's about appropriate for what actually happened in the Pacific War. And these are my... Junior class. Um, American Super Atlantas. With triple 5-inch guns. And a strangely British-looking superstructure. Please, let's hope they actually win. And I think they're up against my Japanese tribals. If you remember correctly, we're, incre we're designed to be incredibly fast. <clears throat> incredibly fast. They're just fanning their tails out to avoid the torpedoes. Oh, good lord, there's a lot of torpedoes in water. They're supposed to be avoiding ships, avoiding torpedoes, and the AA is in charge.
Are these the destroyers I designed or are these something else? Let me go check, actually, because this is not looking as fair as I was hoping it was going to be. Let's go to the other then. Yeah, this is the destroyer I designed. Knew they'd, they'd mucked it up. This makes more sense. This is going to be the enemy. Okay, launch. That's going to be fairer. Look, these light cruisers have enough 5-inch guns to really make the world a very interesting place. Uh, there is exactly, let's see, uh, 6, 8, 12, 36 5-inch guns in 12 triple turrets. Plus 16 torpedoes in four quadruple launchers. Plus 40 millimeter. And all in a snappy 10,000 ton hull. So we'll see what happens versus these far meaner, far more capable. Oh. They carry a lot of torpedoes, these things, though. Let's be honest, that is a lot of torpedoes and firepower. But that is a blizzard of 5-inch shells coming their way. Let's be honest, that is an absolute blizzard. That's not, it's not a case of firing, you know, targeted firing. It's more a case of area saturation. We'll fire enough into that area that it doesn't matter where they are, we'll hit them. When fun when playing War Thunder is probably okay. You can bully uh, destroyers with the Louis Atlanta, but the other fun is to try and bully them with the um, Abdiel class mine layers. Manxman, you know, just come along and just go. Hello, how fast can you go? I can go faster. They are really shaking their tail feathers to make sure the torpedoes can't track them. So far, only one Japanese destroyer looks like it's had close and personal attention. Hello to History Vanguard's brother. Don't worry, saying yo is perfectly fine. There are worse things that could be say, said. A lot worse things.
We'll take a yo. We never worry about yo's. People saying hello is fine by us. Look at that. Just, that's just saturation fire. Oh, yeah, we've hit something. We're not even really targeting. We're just doing area, area annihilation. Oh, yeah, we hit something. Oh, did we? Oh, that's good. We're just firing randomly. Ah, oh, yes, we hit something. Ah, oh, we hit something again. Oh, you're going around a circle. That's fine. We'll hit some more things. Ah, yay. It's literally, you know, it, it gives a good impression of what a machine gun cruiser looks like. really does give an impression of what a machine gun cruiser is like. And I think there's going to be some destroyers currently de are dead shortly. Uh, that one's looking not long for this world. Pretty much, if you've got a 12 or 16 gun... King George V, that was the plan. If you had enough 14... You'd have so many 14-inch shells raining down in comparison to other guns. Just in case of, yes, you have 16 guns. Yeah, 16-inch guns, yes. But our rate of fire is just obscene compared to yours. We can engage at roughly the same range. What are you going to do about it? Because it was all based on the idea that the first round doesn't usually penetrate on armor anyway. The first round damages the armor, the next rounds go for it, so what you want to do is maximize your number of hits. Now, I would say myself, I'm not that big a fan of the 14 inch gun. I don't think it really works in any scenario other than the artificial scenario created by the treaties. And especially once people start ignoring the treaties, I don't think it works at all. Because I think the other problem you've got to remember is that To land a killing blow of 14 inch shell is just that bit more difficult. And your entire dependence is on all those guns functioning in order for you to achieve that rate of fire. And as Prince of Wales demonstrated, when you don't when you have some turrets down, you are in trouble. You're in a lot of trouble. And they just shifting far between the dest enemy destroyers. Uh, yeah, that's 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 sunken. And um, oh yeah, Shale, who survived surprisingly long, considering I think this was the vessel which at the beginning was in trouble. Is um, yeah, she's gone. And uh, these vessels look like they've been out for a Sunday s a sale. <sighs> Could use a fast. Not. The thing is, if you're getting close enough to drop mines in such a way the battleship can't avoid them, you're also close enough that its main guns are engaging at point-blank range. So you have to ask yourself which is going to survive longer. You getting into the range at which you can drop off those sh those mines so that they can av they can get they will run straight into them, or them being able to blast you to smithereens with their guns at point-blank range. Because, let's go for that. Okay, let's, um... And I'm going to apologize now, but I'm going to use the Soviet Union as my example. Going to do a battleship. This is one battleship. We're going to design ships. And I'm going to go to the enemy. 
and it needs a main tower. So that'll be a, we'll fit a main tower to it. Oh, that's looking fairly Soviet-ish. Uh, it needs a secondary tower. We'll fit a secondary tower to it. That looks almost more Japanese. Uh, it needs a funnel. And it now needs main guns, one at least. Well... Just for purposes of today's experiment, this is what we're doing, okay? Leave that way. So this is not a, an actual simulation. This is just me showing. I was showing you something. And now I'm going to show you exactly what happens when you get into point-blank range with these things. Because 9-inch gun is going to have a fairly short range. Now we're at 16 kilometers. That's quite short range. But if you think about it, if you were a mine, a dropping off a mine, you need to drop off mines close enough that I could, even at full speed, can't maneuver away from them. So it's got to be closer than 16 kilometers, hasn't it? It's got to be a lot closer. A lot closer. 13 kilometers, still too far. Eleven kilometers. Well, now we're in ten kilometers. I'm going to turn on the main guns.
10 kilometers, there's no missing. Two salvos. Getting closer. And so the Apostle Pavel is g gone, basically, in pretty much three salvos. And that's a battleship which has armor and all sorts of things and everything else. Imagine what a mine would happen to a mine layer, even a fast mine layer at that range. You don't want to get that close to a battleship. A flotilla, a flotilla of Alaskas versus... Uh, what was the flotilla of Alaskas versus? Let's do the flotilla of Alaskas versus um, an America versus a the German Super Bismarck, which I have from earlier. So... John Bismarck versus the Flotator of Alaska's, so uh, yeah. Modern Heavy Cruiser? Yeah, we want you powerful. Alaska class. Well, this isn't quite as heavy as they were. They were allowed up to it. They were. They were going to be. And they were supposed to be thirty thousand tons. So let's exit this one. Okay. Let's go. Down. Let's go down. Obviously, I have to go to battle cruiser level, and I have to make them roughly thirty-five thousand tons fully disposable. No, modern battle cru large cruiser. That'll do. Yeah. Let's go to 34,000 tons. Top speed. They had a top speed of 33 knots. They had... The very best. The very, very best. Very good. Maximum. You've got to be kidding me. Everything. The top that the Americans could put in them. Right. So. Nine. 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 Uh, supposed to be going down to fin for a five, four and a half. Uh, main deck was four inches. Conning tower. Was 10 inches, well, pretty much 11. Superstructure, hmm, about 2 inches. Set of first inner deck was 
supposed to be 1.5 inches. And then we had the splinter deck of half, well, we'll leave it at 0.5 and we'll add, leave that one there. Uh, we have no inner belt listed, but we'll stick that as 5 inches. That is 2.5 inches and 1 inch. And then we'll put in a main tower. And I'm going to have to do various things to make this fit, aren't I? To get the main... Oh! That is an American looking main tower, I suppose. Secondary tower. That is a less American looking main, a secondary tower, but we'll, we'll, we'll sort of know. Funnel. Oh, yep. Yeah. Why does the big tunnel not fit? I swear, you let me fit. You won't let me fit a big funnel to it. And why give me a funnel hole and then don't let? Hang on, that funnel will fit. That won't. That won't. So I have to fit this one. That doesn't look as good. That really doesn't look as good. But you know, I don't need to put that in. Um, main guns, centerline guns. I want my twelve inch. They had nine twelve inch. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, 9 12 inch, and they were 12 inch. Let's see, they were 12 inch 50 cows. These are going to be. We'll, we'll leave them as 12. We'll do that. We'll leave them there. We'll make them proper 50 cows. Uh, Semi auto, enhanced, super heavy. We want to give them increased shells. We want to give them. They had all the best of everything chucked at them, didn't they? They did. Increased AP. Maximum high explosive for the secondary shells. Or rather, increased high explosive for the secondary shells. Everything they could in terms of these. The best. The absolute best. Nothing but the best. Secondaries, it's going to be the 5 inch, isn't it? It's always the 5 inch, but you know... This is my variation of Alaska, so it's going to be expected to have some more, some interesting additions. Uh, traditionally, they had 12 5 inch guns in 6 dual calibers, and this is 16. Mainly because I can. Torpedoes. No torpedoes fitted. Well, I'm not sure about having no torpedoes fitted. My output is a little adaptation. Also, I'll never know why they insist on giving you triples as the option rather than quadruples or octuples. Yep, I think that's for enough of those. Uh, they need to go down to 50 cal. Five inch need to be five inch 38. That's good. They're all fine. Right them. Now let's see what we can get away with on the beam front.
That's looking pretty nice lines to me. So. What's her cruising speed? 21 knot cruising speed versus the real life cruising speed of 15, uh, 15 knots and 22,000 kilometers. This is 26,000 kilometers. That should do. Right, let's launch. Why is it saying building battleship? I don't want it to build a battleship. Okay. Oh, they've built the battleship. Nope. Lead a battle. Design a ship. Go to the gem one. Yes, you'll have the, uh, the Super Bismarck. And now launch. Os Friedland, you ride again. And I'll once again let the AI command, but hopefully... Hopefully, the AI does not decide to do a suicide by charging battleship approach. Oklahoma, Legend, and Saratoga. I think there have been some lucky hits already. They've already lost the turret. So this is proof that half the Alaskas, if, if they, they built the full Alaskas, that half of them could have been hunting up and down the Atlantic and could have probably dealt with Bismarck quite happily. But it's also due to the sheer volume of shells coming in because... You have 27 guns firing at this ship. Quantity does have a quality all of its own, yes. This is the other point you have to make about the whole Bismarck design saga and all the other sagas that went on in World War II. A lot of the reasons why Yamato and Bismarck, etc. are so overly engineered is because they're designed for scenarios where they know they're going to be fighting outnumbered. They are presuming they're going to be fighting outnumbered because the odds are they will be. That's just not a nice look, those two just menacingly wandering around behind as Oklahoma charges on. In real life, a ship which has lost a turret forward, literally blown up, and is now listing so bad that there is probably water coming into the secondaries, would not be afloat. John Moon, I didn't, uh, didn't sound sorry, so I didn't play the cannon. Well, there is a You Sank My Battleship one, I think, somewhere in there. There is a You Sank My Battleship one. Should possibly change that to You Sank My Os Friedland. Ooh, that's a hundred bits. You see, this is why I really have to try and grow the Twitch stream and the YouTube channel as much as I can, because that allows me to make more stuff more easily controlled and set for all of you. Although I do have to admit, I, the, the, the Twitch stream has sort of taken on a bit the, um, almost a bit sort of for fun stuff. 
Oh, good lord. Oh, on fire. I don't think she's long for this world. I really don't. Oh. This lot don't appear to be damaged at all. I don't think they've sustained any hits. It's kind of nasty. I'm not objecting to it because, you know, honestly, that is what war is like sometimes. But it is kind of machine gun cruises all over again. Would I ever do a drinking stream where I watched the movie Battleship? Um, well, as long as you don't mind the fact that I'm drinking Iron Brew, because that's the strongest drink I drink, then you're fine. I have considered doing a few a movie watch ones, but I'm not sure. I'm not really sure how to do it. Whether to do it on the stream, uh, stream on the Twitch channel, or to stream it on the YouTube channel. I, I, I don't know which one is better to set it up for. Me watching a movie live and just going, oh, oh my lord. Oh my lord. Oh. That's not good for this vessel. It's really not good and it's getting worse. It's going to get a lot worse before it gets... Well, it's not going to get better, is it? At this point, there's only one way we're going to sort this out. If I go back there, just check how many 15-inch rounds does he have left. He has like... Yeah, he has nothing. Um, I'm going to do something which I would never normally do, but I think it is about the time to... I don't know why again, but they are staying at perfect range. So what it is with the Anglo-Japanese that is leading to them getting so close, I do not know. The thing is, you can spot anyone at this range. You can't really do much about them. At this range, you guys should be just absolutely massacring him. And the fact that you're not is worrying me. But I uh, basically just pulled you in to finish this off quickly. Um... Yeah. I now can prove that these uh, that the thing earlier you know, that I came out of my drink did come out of a certain fluff's hair. Because I just pulled some out of your hair, didn't I? I don't know. Oh, you're trying to get up again. Are you nice? I, 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 I'm trying to get, make my cruisers, my, my cruisers win their battle against a battleship quickly. Uh, 
Um, this thing should not, you know, nicest way. I think it's now in five inch gun range. Um, it's well in five inch gun range. It's, uh, this is not good for it. This is not good for it at all. At this point, if you can imagine a ship's getting raked on its deck with five inch gunfire, there is literally nothing it can do to really get, uh, get stand, uh, stand up this fight. And it is gone. Hello. And I think that's... Oh, he's managed to do some damage to Oklahoma. But, yeah, they're, they're in five inch... They're in two inch range now. That's just... Yeah, there's like no chance. You don't want to get into two inch range. There is... If anything of you, part of you is firing back, that's just amazing. That's not physically possible. How are you still moving a turret? Your aft turret is literally underwater. That's underwater. Yes, you should be sinking. It was the Italians who had issues with their powder bags and their shell design because in during World War II, because they had all sorts of issues because they... Uh, Lovely, um, how do I put this? The, the, the government had been very corrupt in how it awarded things in terms of the manufacture, and some of the stuff was manufactured by idiots. That allowed them to make a lot of money, but it wasn't really sensible. Right. I'm going to say thank you very much, everyone, to watching, because I'm going to call it a night there, because I have to go and, as someone's reminding me, take someone for his nightly excuse so i'm going to say thank you to jonathan moon thank you arch magnus uh, 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 thank you leslin uh thank you ali loves history thank you oh good lord well as you can see someone is making sure he says thank you as well uh thank you guardsman 14 thank you uh garius thank you everyone who's been on this evening and i hope you've enjoyed it i hope you've had fun <laughs> I'm chatting away oh Thank you. Thank you, Lancaster the Wise. Thank you for following the channel. Thank you very much, everyone. Take care and um, have fun. <laughs> Thanks, Andy. Take care, Ron, and thank you. Uh, I am now getting mildly mugged by someone who's reminding me it is time. It is time. Take care, everyone, and I'll see you uh, Sunday for the uh, Rome Total War stream. Take care, Ron.